One of the most important principles in reloading is to load absolutely concentric and straight bullets. Reloaders refer to concentricity as runout. When a bullet with excessive runout leaves the case, it is unstable. That instability is not corrected by traveling through the barrel and when the bullet exits the barrel, the instability is still present. It is logical that the result of bullet runout is an inaccurate shot, especially at longer distances. There is a misconception that such a bullet with runout can be straightened in the case. You actually get tools for this. When this is done, however, the neck tension between the case and bullet is altered and the grip on the bullet is lessened. The result is variations in neck tension amongst cartridges, which in turn creates variations in pressure and bullet speed and ultimately has a negative effect on accuracy. Skew case necks often guide and steer bullets to be also loaded skew. The process to load concentric cartridges with minimal bullet runout is discussed at length in Kasper Nienaber's Reloading DVD in the chapters on case resizing and reloading procedure. Here I discuss the use of the Mumbo runout device, which conforms to all the requirements and is also easy to adjust and use. Attach the runout device to the table with Prestic to anchor it firmly. Spray the shafts with silicon spray to ensure that adjustments can be made easily and without friction. The supports must be able to adjust easily. Friction or uneven movement of the cartridge while measuring registers on the dial indicator and hinders the measuring process. Bearings give frictionless support when a cartridge is rotated on it. The bearings are held in place by O-rings. The dial indicator must easily adjust sideways to accommodate different cartridge lengths and to measure various spots on the case. Electronic as well as mechanical or needle type dial indicators are available. The mechanical dial indicator only measures in hundredths of a millimeter or 0.01 millimeter intervals. The measurements for reloading are often in inches. The advantage of the in-size electronic dial indicator is that it measures in millimeters as well as inches, just as an electronic vernier does. The dial indicator must be clamped firmly in position without any leeway. Any leeway in the assembly of the dial indicator can result in wrong measurements. Adjust the dial indicator in position to measure the concentricity of the case neck measured in the middle of the neck. Switch on the dial indicator. The dial indicator must be able to register at least 10 millimeters travel. There are two electronic dial indicators available. The more affordable 2112 has three buttons. On, off, millimeter inches, and zero. The more expensive 2104 dial indicator has five buttons. I am going to describe the differences in the use of these two dial indicators. The 2112 with three buttons. Rotate the case slowly until the minimum measurement is indicated. Zero the dial indicator. Rotate the case and confirm the zero. This process to zero the dial indicator must be repeated for each new measurement. Slowly rotate the case and measure the concentricity of the neck in hundredths of a millimeter. Switch the dial indicator to the measurement in thou. The last digit indicates a measurement of half a thou. Let's look at the more expensive electronic 2104 dial indicator with five buttons. The dial indicator has a button called M on the top right hand corner. If you press the M button the first time, the dial indicator registers only the maximum measurement and displays max. With the second press, it registers only the minimum measurement and displays min. The third press registers the total travel and displays TIP. This is the difference between the minimum and maximum. TIP is the measurement we are actually interested in. The fourth press brings the dial indicator back to normal. 
This M facility simplifies the use of the dial indicator substantially and it works as follows. Switch on the dial indicator. Press the M button three times until TIP appears in the right hand corner of the display. The dial indicator remains in this mode until the M button is pressed again to bring the dial indicator back to normal. Place the cartridge case in position. Rotate it to ensure that it fits comfortably and press zero. Rotate the case and read the measurement. If you do not trust the measurement, rotate the case again, press zero, rotate again and read the new measurement. In this M mode, it is not necessary to go through the whole zeroing process with each measurement. That is to rotate the case until the minimum measurement is displayed, press zero, confirm the zero and measure. With the M mode, you just place the case in position, rotate slightly, zero and measure. This M mode of the 2104 makes it much easier to use than with the three button 2112 dial indicator. The rest of the measurements will be done with the mechanical needle type dial indicator. A good quality dial indicator tends to work more fluently and smoothly. The cheaper models tend to have somewhat irregular and jittery needle movements, which can be irritating. The quality in size dial indicator measures in hundredths of millimeters or 0.01 millimeter intervals. Measure the concentricity of a bullet on the ogive, approximately where the bullet touches the lens. This bullet shows a runout of approximately three hundredths of a millimeter or one thou, which is very good. A runout of less than two thou for bullets is very good, up to four thou is acceptable, but a runout of more than that will only be good enough to shoot at distances up to 100 meters. I have also discussed the measurement of neck wall thickness with a ball micrometer. It is considerably easier to measure variations in neck wall thickness with this runout device. The Mumba runout device is also used for this purpose and is built to be used by both left and right handed people. Zero the scale of the dial indicator. Measure the variation in neck thickness. Let us measure the neck thickness with the 2104 electronic dial indicator. In Casper Nienaber's reloading DVD, the results, use and specifications of these concentricity measurements are discussed in detail.